Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Gonzi and today we are going to be reacting to a new casual geographic video called The Traumatizing Reality of Being an Ant. So yeah man, let's go and check this out. Let's get it! To die. So many dumb ways to die. Kinda sucks. Song. Don't get me wrong, the gift of life is a beautiful thing and all it that. It is. And again, none of us Praise really actually be here. And then one day you gain consciousness, minor character development followed. And before you could blink twice, you got student loans, a job, and taxes. All that aside, though, True. we actually have it pretty good. I mean, we, have. we could be ants. Because in the game of life, ants have some of the most creatively cruel game overs of any animal. To be fair, ants do have a lot going for them. They take the whole strength in numbers thing and put it on steroids. True. Resulting in a eusocial insect able to weaponize its community to take down threats hundreds of times its size like an angry Twitter mob. The all for one mentality is how ants have managed to stay in the game for well over 100 million years with today over 12,000 flavors of them seasoning virtually every part of the earth that is in Antarctica. The problem with being so ancient is that your neighbors have had that much time to evolve around your Cute. Ears, which often involves Listen, using the bro. ants own habits and traits against them and trust me you're gonna see just how ridiculous some animals got with it plenty of animals grocery lists have ants on it it'd be virtually impossible to list all of them but here are some of the most memorable for us and traumatizing for the ants okay for example let's go. this is an ant graveyard and most ants don't find huh. it until it's too late that's because the ant line is the equivalent of a call of duty camper that digs a funnel shaped crater in the sand and then hides in the center of it completely invisible to the rest of the world all it takes is one ant to step into the death trap to get sent sliding into the center and with the shifting oh. sands and the ant line tracking the ant through vibrations no. and actively flicking up sand, the harder the ant tries to struggle, the further it slides into the pit, directly into the snare trap jaws. <laughs> and considering some ant lines can spend years in a stakeout, once they do grab the ant, they waste little time injecting it with venom to paralyze it, along with enzymes to digest it from the literal inside out, which is when oh. the ant gets its actual life essence sucked from it by the ant line drinking its liquefied insides. And once the ant serves no further purpose, the ant line yeets the violated corpse out the trap like an empty Capri Sun, and it goes back into its homicide uh, oh next. he's sunk as well that bro that sounds familiar it's cuz this is bar for bar what the sarlacc pit from star wars was inspired by oh Worst part is, right. even if the ant manages to struggle up one side of the pit real life jabba will throw up sand from the center mm -hmm. causing the sand around it to collapse that's a tough way to go man a camping nah. tremor isn't the ant's only paralysis demon a canthaspis patax is an assassin bug that also murks anything ant for a living like the ant line that involves administering tissue melting toxins and then slurping the life out of it but they don't uh. just toss out the used and abused ant carcass when they're done. The nymph gathers the soul evacuated bodies of its victims and then wears it like a jacket. This no, that's disrespect, bro. On its onslaught while camouflaging it so it too doesn't get put on a t-shirt. This is the first example of what I said about animals using the ants' habits against them. The spiders that the nah. family would have to worry about also don't want smoke with an angry ant mafia. So scientists believe that cosplaying as an ant army keeps the underage assassin bug alive long enough to reach its adult form. When they don't oh, need a car. Alright, that makes more body. sense, bro. I thought it was just disrespecting, bro. Resistance can really come down to being a part of some assassin's ensemble. I only listed two. It gets so much worse. Forward flies are one of the biggest ops to an ant's pursuit of happiness. To really? The point where the United States tried to weaponize the flies against them. The wow. The starts when a forward fly, which can be easily mistaken for a fruit fly, penetrates the thorax of the ant and then leaves behind an egg and then just takes off like only a destructive <laughs> dead bee can. This doesn't kill the ant, but the events that follow make it wish it did. Because once the egg hatches, it migrates to the ant's head where it begins eating it from the inside. Oh. The victimized ant is alive for all this, but seemingly goes into a catatonic state. After a couple weeks, we're basically talking about a zombie ant getting its vessel carjacked by the fly larva. That's not hyperbole. The larva devours the ant's brain in its last chance to nah. it forces a self-imprisoned ant to just wander around aimlessly. Eventually, the larva manages to guide the ant to its ideal nursery grounds, that being some leaf litter or a crack in the soil. And in its final act, and after weeks of pretty much being locked in the sunken place, the ant's head literally divorces the rest of its body as the felony fly larva spits out enzymes that destroy the very membranes keeping the head and body together. It spends a little more time using the disembodied head as a crib before it pupates and Bro, bugs are so it's disgusting. Out. It's a fate that Ugh. will violate the Geneva Convention, but since insects no. have very little rights, the United States have been trying to use forward flies in the fight against fire ants. Fire ants that were accidentally Ubered into the American Southwest in the 1930s from Brazil. Fire ants are menaces though. So trend. I kind of so see why. But forward okay, flies no. the most brutal form of population control for the fire ants that really didn't ask to be here in the first place. And apparently, the flies only subtract a small portion of the fire ants, but the threat of them drastically disrupts the colony's activities and forces them to retreat underground. To be fair, you'd be a whole lot less productive if you witnessed your neighbor's head fall off and a whole alien crawl out. On True. one hand, weaponizing flies is probably less destructive than mass for breezing pesticides like 
like DDT. But on the other, playing God with a mind-controlling, brain-eating parasite can't that's possibly rough, be bro. But either way, that's a rough example way of an to go. That's tailored its entire existence around griefing ants, and it's not the only fly that's learned how to hoe ants for a living. Ants do this thing where they actually hold on a second. Okay, we're good. Ants often do this thing where they'll feed another ant by regurgitating into the mouth of the receiver. <laughs> oh yeah, it's nasty nasty, but not only are they sharing food, but ants like carpenter ants transfer proteins to help boost disease resistance and overall colony immunity. Enter the flies. One species of South oh! African fly figured out the signal one ant will use they on its donor to puke, man. So nah. the flies come in and use the signal, touching the mouth region of the ant, to force it to give up its food. And as smart as they allegedly are, the ants aren't smart enough to realize they're getting fleeced out of food by a fly. Which is probably how they got the nickname, the ant mugging fly. Mm. Like I said, hundreds of millions of years is a lot of time for your ops to study your playbook and use it against you. Because when ants aren't getting trapped door by ant lions, finessed by flies, or turned into a light flex by an assassin, ants are often the victim of some of the most complex manipulation in the entire animal kingdom. One example is how this entire Ooh, butterfly's beautiful. existence depends solely That's on deceiving gorgeous, ants. Man. The Alcon blue butterfly has no weapons, no venom, no armor at all. But what they do have are pheromones that are almost identical to that produced by ant larvae. Oh. So when the caterpillar air drops itself down to the forest floor, it's almost immediately taken in by a colony of ants. By mimicking the ant equivalent of a new baby smell, the caterpillar manages to get VIP treatment from the same ants that could turn it into coffin stuffing. Damn. The ants carry it into their nest where they feed the caterpillar like one of their own. To the point where if there's ever a food shortage, the intruder manages to savvy its way into getting priority over their actual young. Especially wow. since the caterpillar is able to mimic I didn't the sound that the queen makes in order to get more attention. And I get that it took millions of years of trial and error to get it right. That is some wild commitment. The That's Alcon wild. maintains the fraud for two years until one day it pupates and flies out the ant nursery with the ants unaware of just how hard they got played. This game plan works out so well for the butterfly that even one of the slowest animals on earth takes a cue from them and pulls a fast one on ants. Ants love eating snail slime. I want you to remember mm. that piece of information, it's going to be real important later. But one right. species of snail will purposely secrete slime in order to attract the ants who kidnap it and carry it into their nest. Since most ants will 100% eat a snail alive, at first this looks like self-subtraction with extra steps. But once carried mm. into the ant fortress, the snail suddenly stops releasing the slime that got it there in the first place. And somehow not being seen as food gives the snail diplomatic immunity, and they're able ah. to move around the nest untouched and even feed on the groceries the ants bring in while contributing a total of nothing. But That's at least with the so the snail, technically no one really gets hurt. But one animal manages to not only completely Jesus. manipulate its ant mark, it does it in one of the most ridiculously complicated ways possible. Go get a snack if you don't have one. This is finna be a novel. The huh? jihad starts with a parasitic flatworm that enslaves the ant through mind control. You mm. see the pattern here, right? Yeah. Completely against its will, the ant is forced by the flatworm shacking up in its brain to climb up a flower or stem and clamp its jaws around the tip of the stem where it can wait for up to two months. Wait for what exactly? Basically for an animal that eats grass to come in and take the zombie ant with it. End of the road hmm. for the ant, but the parasite manages to make its way into the liver of its new host, which is probably why the flatworm is called the liver fluke. And if you Ooh. think getting lodged inside a cow's liver is a dead end, then you must not have believed me when I told you how needlessly complicated this stuff gets. While feeding on whatever cow, sheep, or rabbit unintentionally murked the ant, the fluke lays eggs that then get deuced out by the same host. Those eggs don't get to hatch until a snail comes along and eats the droppings, along with the eggs in them. Hmm. And it's while getting taxied by host number three that the eggs hatch and proceed to irritate the snail to the point where they get ejected, along with a good amount of snail slime. You remember what I said about snail snot and who likes to eat it? And it's once an ant feeds on the contaminated, parasite-loaded goop that this vicious cycle restarts itself. Oh, Pretty much the wow. life cycle looks more like a family guy cutaway. That's insane! But Meg, the biggest casualty in all of this is an ant that thought it scored an easy meal, but instead gets turned into an easy lick. And I know what you're thinking, and yes, there's a fungus that does the exact same thing. Ants live through The Last of Us firsthand. True. The cordyceps fungus infects an ant. If you ever played The Last of Us, you know that the virus that turns the humans into clickers and stuff, they don't call them zombies, but let's say zombies. It's the clickers and everything, so... The virus that does that is the cordyceps virus and that actually exists and that actually happens in insects. So he's going to explain. So yeah, that actually happens. Robs it of its yeah. life choices and then forces its new vessel to climb up high enough until it makes it clamp its vice grip jaws around a stem. And then it just stands there waiting for the sweet release of permasleep. And once mm -hmm. the ant becomes a was, its withered body becomes ground zero as the fungus proceeds to explode. Exactly how it body happens in the last of us. Head. And from there, it spits out spores in order to continue the cycle of completely True. desecrating the ant's way of life. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, there are many obstacles to an ant's very existence. Taxes don't seem too bad now, huh? But by far, the biggest threat to ant survival are other ants. Ants Man. regularly commit acts of war against other colonies, and the outcome is crimes, just horrific bro. as you know. War crimes, Apart from the Shut mass up. slaughterings, ants regularly participate in slavery. 
when ants like the red Damn. from Micah raid enemy nests, it's not enough for them to red rum any adults that try to slow them down. They'll make off with as much of the victim colony's larva as possible. In a season, they can abduct thousands. Dang. Back at the kidnapper's home base, the stolen children are born with no way of knowing how they got there and are conditioned to serve the colony that massacred their family. The kidnapped are made to do tasks such as maintain the nest, go out and search for food, and even look after the next generation of baby snatchers. Mm. They'll even do that weird food transfer vomity thing I told you about to feed their own captors. But don't think for a second that the kidnappers get off scot-free. Eventually, the enslaved turn on their kidnappers by hitting them where it hurts the most. A good number of the slave maker and pupae get murked by the same slave workers that were supposed to be looking after them. Damn. Just get back and delete more than half the colony's children before they finish the pupil stage and become adults. And in some mm. cases, up to two thirds of the slaver's offspring get relieved from life. I've made this joke before, but that's Django Unchained levels of get back, which is why another ant figured out a safer way of griefing their ops. The Solenopsis de Guerri of South America is another that's so ugly, bro. the nest of, for example, uh. red fire ants. And instead of immediately turning the queen into a hashtag, the parasite instead steals the food intended for her, which pretty much kills the actual queen slowly. And while Damn. that's happening, the parasite queen starts spawning eggs, which the workers unknowingly take care of. And once her children are developed and ready, they fly off like a virus to infect even more colonies. The mm. Solenopsis is such a menace that, just like with Ford flies, this parasite has been used to nerf the red fire ants that have become invasive in some places. And at this point, it's pretty clear that the ant's entire purpose is to serve the colony and by extension the queen. This means that some ants have essentially sold their souls for the ant kingdom's best interests. Soldier Damn. ants are so geared for war and nothing else that they physically can't feed themselves and without worker ants to mama bird them, they'd starve. The cephalotes spent evolution points on a head wide enough to block entrances to their nest from intruders. Pretty wow. dope until you realize their entire life's purpose comes down to just being a living door. All this to protect the queen who would 100% throw her colony under the bus if it benefits her. That's not speaking hypothetically either. Queen ants have been known to backdoor their own colony. Many ant colonies have more than one queen, which on paper should be a good thing since more queens means more workers means better chance for the colony to prosper. The Ooh. problem is the small but very real chance that the workers turn on the extra queens and take them out of power. Permanently. Queen Damn. ants seem to know this, so sometimes they'll try to be slick and purposely produce less eggs so that they can save their energy fighting off any disobedient subordinates if it arrives. Wow, I didn't know that either, bro. Producing less what? eggs and therefore less workers actually hurts the colony overall, even if it helps the one queen. The problem is, the workers know it, and they can sense how fertile a queen is based on chemicals. So mm. if the worker ants suspect that one of the queens is holding out on them, it's curtains for her. Ant politics means Damn. if the ant queen gets too selfish, she gets executed, but become too much of a team player with other queens in power, and the queen ant becomes completely defenseless in the case of a mutant, since the process of making so many eggs means she doesn't have any energy left to defend herself. Damn! The ant pays a higher price for being a team player than a species found in Southeast Asia. These ants don't have huge mandibles, uh. but when their colony is under attack, then you see exactly why, why they're so ugly, the bro? Explodants. They nah. have huge glands under their abdomen, and as a last resort, they'll force the glands to burst and cause themselves to explode. This act of self subtraction coats the enemy. Oh, and yeah, I've seen these before. These are mad as well. Attackers while also poisoning them. True. The ants kamikaze themselves, but they do it for the good of the colony. And this isn't even the only way ants will voluntarily cross themselves off the census. There's a species of Brazilian ant that'll seal the entrance to their nest every night to keep possible threats out. The problem is, they use actual living ants to close the entrance from the outside. And with no way to get back in, a few brave worker ants spend the night outside the safety of the nest. Damn. And become past tense by the time the nest is opened again in the morning. But at least when these ants sign their own obituary, it's by choice and for a purpose. There is no choice or purpose to what's happening. Oh yeah, that's much. things to know about army ants. Number one, they're the no circle of death. They don't make a permanent settle down nest and are constantly on the move. Number two is that army ants are essentially blind and rely on pheromones to get around. An ant mill like this happens when a small party of ants get separated from the rest of the foraging group, mm -hmm. and while lost, they begin to start following each other. And with no way of knowing they're going in an endless circle, you see exactly why this has been called the death spiral. Yep. They just keep going until they eventually pass tense to pure exhaustion. And not all ant mills are this small. One of the first death spirals ever seen was about 1,200 feet across. Oh for the my god! That's about 365 meters. And for the American Damn. concept of distance, like me, that's more than three football fields. And apparently, it took each ant two and a half hours just to complete one lap. And out of all the disturbing ways ants get logged out of life, this might be the worst one. Mindlessly marching in a circle, blindly following the guy in front of you until your number eventually gets called. Yeah, it's the worst one because for some people, it's the most relatable. And on that note, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure Damn. you go outside and do something you wouldn't normally do. Break out of the rut any chance you can. Because the thing about a death spiral is, you may not realize you're in it until it's too late. True. We'll see you on the next one. Nah, nah, nah. The queen one called me the Willis, bro. If the queen is slacking on the eggs, she gets killed by the other ants. But 
If she lays too many eggs, she doesn't have the energy in case of a riot that happens in a colony. So she couldn't die either way. Oh, that's actually insane. I didn't know that. See, this is why Casual Geographic is the GOAT. I learn something new every time I watch a video of this. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching the video, man. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Guys, before you go, I just gotta tell you, man. Keep going first as always. Drink water. Go tell your parents to love them. Alright? If you hear you know what to do, man. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. My name is Golan Zane. See you guys tomorrow. Goodbye. We used to been through this, been through that. Reminiscing on my past. I found bliss in the way that I carry on my back. Let my soul sing my song. It goes, ooh, na, 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 na.